This is unlike any MakerBot you've ever seen. Is that right, Alan? I would absolutely say so. This is my buddy, Alan Mandic. Mandic, really? Along with being a custom car builder modifier, Alan does incredible models that he releases for people and made this. I really want you to talk about this because it looks like this is nothing like the MakerBot name that's on it. I call this Project Reanimaker because it started life as a MakerBot, but I brought it back to life as something entirely different. This is a custom designed Core XY machine that I just used the frame, the rails, the bed assembly of an original MakerBot replicator. Uh, kit, you know, would have sold for $2,000 10 years ago. Back in the day. Yeah, back in the day was what you had. And I just gutted it out and designed something totally different. I figured everybody's going to be bringing Vorons to this show, so. It's true. I, I wanted to bring something a little bit different. I could have brought one of my Vorons, but it's been catching a lot more attention than I think one of those would have. It's very unique in what it's presenting because, like the Reanimaker name says, you're, you're taking an older frame and some of the movement bits, but you know, updating it for current standards. So like you said, it's a Core XY custom design machine mm -hmm. that you designed, right? Yep. Just like a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, every printed part on this is my own design and construction. I designed it all from scratch. Because of the open source nature of the original replicator, I was able to find the original CAD file for the replicator. For this! For the replicator, and build off of that for what I wanted, and I tried to use like parts I had lying around, literally. It's the original stepper motors for this thing, which are not ideal for the speeds <laughs> I'm pushing. Uh, the motors run a little hot, even at lower currents than they're supposed to be run at. I'm pushing it as hard as I can. It's got issues. The print quality is nowhere near what I wanted it to be. But in the same regard, I got this thing printing for the first time two days ago at midnight in my hotel room. So <laughs> I think I'm doing okay. That's the, that's the con crunch right there. It is. Cosplayers have it, 3D printing people have it too. Yep. Okay, so the Reanimaker, this new class of resurrected 3D printing machine, what are the stats? What's the build volume here? What's the nozzle temperature go to? Like, what's the print speeds? Let's talk about it. Okay, we're running the new Drop Effect XG hot end in this Ooh. thing. Just released this week. I've had it for a couple months, I think, actually. But so tiny. It's a little toady thing and really lightweight. The entire carriage assembly, the entire tool head on this thing, is weighing in just five grams more than one of the original stepper motors from the replicator did, and it was a dual extrusion system. I focused on reducing the weight in a lot of what I designed here and using 3D printed parts. Again, I was trying to focus on just what I had lying around, a, a NEMA 14 motor I had. So I printed this micro Sherpa extruder that's all 3D printed and uses Bontech <laughs> gears. But a lot of it was, I didn't want to spend another thousand dollars on a printer and also just using parts I had lying around. Uh, it's got a Big Tree Tech SKR3 mainboard in it running Clipper firmware off of a Raspberry Pi that lives in that little TV screen over there. No way! Yeah. This I, is the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it's glued down, but... Okay. Uh, I was about ready to just reduce the glue to nothing. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, okay, but I want to look at it. Look at that! Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic! With the whole reanimator, I was kind of thinking of the reanimator movie from uh, back in the 80s. I figured, yeah. yeah. And so I wanted, I've got the wood frame. I thought about it, I probably should have put like some uh, wood paneling inside of the box. <laughs> but I went for the tube TV look. The Raspberry Pi is in there with a Big Tree Tech touchscreen running this whole machine, just trying to finish out the aesthetic of the build. Well, you know, what's really cool about this, and what I, what just brings me such joy, is in the, the reanimator name and the process of using something old, but it's not like you're custom building a really small machine, 3, pre, 3D printing small parts for. You said, this is the area I get to work with, mm -hmm. and you custom design parts to take advantage of it. Plus, in the future, if this is something that you want to upgrade or, or, or go further with, like you can replace motors, you can replace guides and rails, and you have the option of really like taking it full send. Oh yeah, I, I have no idea what the future of this project is at this point. It was, a, I don't want to say passion project, but a just what can I do? What can I create with this thing? You mentioned I was a custom car builder before. Mm -hmm. A lot of what I did in that world is what we called resto mods, where we would take a 69 Camaro and put a, a 2012 Camaro engine in it. Oh, okay, it's like doing an EV update to an older rig exactly. sort of thing. A lot of people love the old cars, but they don't love the way they drive. It's a, <laughs> it's a, a 
nice fuzzy memory that they forget drum breaks all the way around really didn't stop. <laughs> so this is kind of the concept I brought to this thing of a Restomod 3D printer where take this vintage printer and upgrade it to a modern machine. It's a, a wooden box that prints like a Voron. So. Tries to print like a Voron. Tries. You print. said print quality isn't quite there. It's got the speed, but the quality is not quite there. Okay. But I'm getting resonance. I'm thinking maybe I need to put some uh, like dryland bushings in instead of the bearings. There you go. So I haven't 100% decided. For all I know, it's going to go home, sit on the shelf until I decide to rebuild it into the next stage of its life. But yeah. Reanimator 2. Reanimator 2, the sequel. It will scare you to pieces. Well, if people out there want to know more about it, are you going to publish anything about this on like GitHub or a I'm, blog or I'm TikTok? Prob I'm probably going to end up putting out a all the files from this design, this project. I've had people asking if I want to open source the project. My problem is supporting it. I, I can't be supporting a full open source project. But <laughs> no, no, I, I can, understand. I can release the design files, so if somebody for some reason wants to build their own reanimator, they can. I'm likely going to put them on things. I'll be doing a full dedicated video breaking down some mm -hmm. of the design process, the experience of getting it here, and all of that on my channel soon. It's a really cool project, Alan. I love the idea of using the box. I love the namesake. It feels good, like, and this is the perfect event to bring it to. And like you said, everybody's gonna have a Voron. Only one person's gonna have a Reanimator, and that's you. Yep. I've wanted to work on this project for quite some time, and Earth was the perfect drive to push me over the edge, be like, nope, it's time to do it. Let's build this thing. Listen, if you enjoyed this, you're gonna love what Alan does on other platforms. Let the audience know where to find you, man. You can find me at Mandic Really on everything. If you search Mandic Really, you should find me. So, M-A-N-D-I-C-R-E-A-L-L-Y. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, that's where I am. Put the links down there, you know. Thank you. All right, well, it's customary for me to offer a high five to my audience, are you up for it? Absolutely. All right, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and as always, high five. High five, you want one? Yeah.